All right. Hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. And today we're going to talk about uh, another quick tip here. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, turntable animations in Blender. And um, there's two main and different ways you can actually um, do turn or animate turntable animations. Um, and we'll talk about both of them in this. And um, I'm going to do the first one, which I find is e a little bit easier and uh, is actually a little bit more practical too, especially when you have animated objects. And that is to make the camera itself um, do a turntable instead of all the objects turning while the camera stays still. So with this first one, what we're going to do first is we're going to add a camera here. We're going to uh, move over here so you can see it. And we're going to move it out just a little bit. So about that will probably be good. And then we're going to pull it up a little bit. We're going to go to our camera and we're going to rotate it and, you know, just get it a little bit more positioned so that, you know, see that's that's a pretty good view of our objects right here. So now we have our camera, but, you know, we don't really want to, you know, make a curve and snap it to that and do that because that takes a little bit of long time and it adds an unnecessary curve to the viewport. And we don't want to, you know, go in and hand animate this camera because it might need to have more animation added to it later that is specific to the camera and not to the whole scene. Well, there's one easy way to do this, and that is called parenting. And uh, parenting is a really helpful thing in uh, pretty much all 3D programs. And here we'll see one application of parenting that is really, really helpful. So uh, what I did right there was I added an empty. So we add our empty here, and we're going to call this, um, we're going to call it turn table and then parent. And then we'll use this empty in both examples. But we're going to do our camera rotation first. So now what we do is uh, unselect everything. We select the camera first, and then holding shift, we select the empty so that the empty is a lighter orange and the camera is a darker orange. Then we'll press control P and we'll go to object. Now, sometimes this might make your camera move a little bit. And if that's the case, all you have to do is control P and then keep transform. And uh, that will make it stay in the current position it's in. So now the camera itself can still be moved without the empty moving, but um, if the empty is moved, the camera will move in suit. So if you can see here, we rotate it, it'll rotate like this. So now all we have to do is keyframe the rotation of the empty and the camera will turn. So right here on frame zero, we're going to press I, insert rotation, and then we're going to make this total thing 360 frames long. And uh, you'll see why in a second. Basically for each frame, it's going to be one rotation, or one degree of rotation. So here, now we're going to go to the 180th frame. And there, we're going to press R, with our empty still selected, Z, and then 180. So now our camera has rotated 180 degrees and 180 frames. We'll hit I, insert rotation, and then we'll go to frame 360 and do the same thing. We'll hit R, Z, and 180. So now we're back to where we started. And now, if you'll see here, we'll go into the camera view. But before we actually look at this, well, we can look at this really quickly, and I'll show you what we're going to do. You see here, it kind of starts off slow, and then it gets faster. And then when it gets here, it's going to start to slow down again a little bit. And then it's going to stay slow, and it's going to speed back up a little bit. And then it's going to get slow. This is an effect that um, is not really, we don't really want this. We want our turntable to be consistent and even in the amount of, uh, in, in the amount of acceleration and deceleration we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and from 3D view, go to the graph editor with the empty still selected. And then you see here we have our, our turn right here. And we're going to press A to deselect everything and then A again to select all. We're going to press key, interpolation mode, and linear. This makes it so that instead of a curve, each frame, um, it goes up by the same standard value. So now if we go to our 3D viewpoint and we press Alt-A, you'll see that the rotation is consistent and even throughout each frame, one degree per frame. And this is really nice. Now, next we have our other way of doing animation. So if we take this parent and we undo that um, so that the camera is no longer parented, so you'll see now here in the animation, the camera does not rotate while the empty still does. And what you do is you have the camera, only the camera selected, and you press Control-I, and now we have everything else. We're going to deselect or select the empty so that it's lighter orange and um, everything else is darker orange. And we're going to once again press Control P. Now, once again, you might have to um, do keep transform if your objects are deformed in a special way. So now we see here, if we do this, our objects will rotate instead of our camera. So now if we go back into the camera view, it still looks like a turntable animation if we didn't have this plane here, but the camera is not actually moving. So that's two different ways to do it. Now, you should also be aware, and the reason why I did this um, from three, uh, 
you know, zero to 360 frames is one to have uh, one road, one degree of rotation on each frame, but it also makes it easier for me to make a turntable animation. Because right now, if we were to actually play the turntable animation, when we get to frame 360 and then it goes back to frame zero to start over, there will actually be a very, very small pause. And it's not very noticeable, but it is one of those things that you can definitely pick out, especially if you're doing a looping animation where you have a turntable going two or three times. The way to get rid of this is simply, instead of the end being 360, the end will be 359. So even though it does turn one more degree on that last frame, that degree is the same as frame zero. So when it repeats, it will be a consistent turntable. So if we go here and we press Alt A, you'll see here it's turning, it's turning, it's turning. We're gonna get up to this and then see, look, there is no gap where it's shuttered or anything. And so basically you just take away the end of your last frame. And for most animations for turntables, that will probably work. It might not always work if you don't have an even number, but for the most part, that works really well for turntable animations. All right, well, uh, that's it for turntable animations. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.